Hello my friends, today we'll be discussing which CPU you should buy now if you're looking for a new one now and don't want to or can't wait for new ones to be released. Today it's all about two processors, namely the flagship models of the mainstream lineup by Intel as well as AMD respectively. The models in question today are the popular i9-9900K and Ryzen 7 2700X. At the time of this video, the 9900K can be had for roughly 530 US dollars while the 2700X comes in at about 290. That's a price difference of well over $200. So here's the question, how much more performance do we get from the i9 if we are willing to pay the premium for it? Isn't the Ryzen 7 2700X good enough? Well, these are today's questions I'll more or less try to address. And I'm certain with this video I'll be starting yet another one of those fanboy wars and surely will be offending both sides, Intel and AMD fans but I just want to put all the facts on the table as best as I can without missing certain details, hopefully. Honestly, I wouldn't advise you to go out and buy a new high-end mainstream CPU right now, since in a few months we could already be talking about AMD's new Ryzen 3000 series. And quite frankly, we don't know yet what to really expect in terms of price to performance ratio. After all, it is still unclear whether or not the latest rumors can be trusted. Of course, in the meantime, during the production of this video, we could be looking at something more solid, depending on when this video goes online. So that's why I want to clarify right off the bat that my video today will only be a short living one that will most likely turn irrelevant in a couple of months. But oh well, we do live in a present and some of you simply want or need to buy a processor now. So when comparing the specs of both chips side by side, at least this time around we are comparing similar models, at least from a technical point of view. Both are equipped with 8 cores and 16 threads, therefore should do great in applications that rely on high multi threading performance. The base clocks on paper are nearly identical, but do not let that fool you. Intel's base clock mostly is much higher than the stated 3.6 GHz, but doesn't maintain a turbo of 5 GHz across all cores, something many keep mixing up. Same applies with AMD. These 4.3 GHz cannot be seen across all cores. The TDP we hardly can take seriously anymore, and real life testing is proof enough for that, which you'll see shortly. The amount of cache is very similar in fact, and in theory the memory controller appears to be better on Ryzen, but not so fast, in reality the Intel chip is the one that can run with much higher clocking RAM. However, you're probably not here to analyze specs, you want to see real life tests, so here you go, the benchmarks. All right. So we can say bad things about Intel here and there, but right now the i9-9900K undeniably in terms of raw performance 
takes the lead. In pretty much all tests carried out, the 9900K turned out to be the winner, no matter if gaming or productivity, that would be stuff like rendering and so on. Pricing, temperatures, power consumption and thus additional costs is something you seriously have to keep in mind though. But I honestly gotta say, the AMD Ryzen 7 2700X does make up for a good fight and doesn't necessarily make the 9900K's life super easy, especially since the Ryzen chip does come with some benefits over the i9. First of all, it's much cheaper, a fancy RGB stock cooler is already included, with Intel you need to get something really powerful, and as said before, you have to factor in temperatures and power draw. But some of you don't care, that's fine too. Now I don't know whether or not you've heard about it, but we finally have a successor to the popular Cinebench R15 benchmark we've been using for years. We are now looking at Cinebench R20, and this one is more extreme and offers a heavier load than its predecessor, more suitable for today's CPU world, with lots of cores in it. AVX workloads are now integrated, which of course drives up power draw and temperatures, especially noticeable on Intel CPUs. But we now also do get to see a wider gap between the i9 and Ryzen 7 as opposed to those Cinebench R15 results. So objectively speaking, the 9900K when it comes down to raw performance is the faster chip of the two, not just in terms of single core performance, but also in the multi-threading side of things. Nevertheless, it needs to be said, the Ryzen 7 2700X is still one hell of a good offering. Sure, you do get slightly less FPS with it. Sure, you don't render as fast with the 2700X as opposed to the 9900K, but does that mean the Ryzen is a bad choice? No, by far not. At the end of the day, it's a matter of costs. And that doesn't only apply to initial pricing of the CPUs alone. I would like to clarify once more that the Ryzen 7 does draw noticeably less power and thus runs quite a lot cooler as well. By the way, both processors I've cooled with the same 240mm AIO liquid cooler. And before some start accusing me, no MCE, so multi-core enhancement has been turned off on the i9. And I did notice in my own use, while rendering, with the i9 I'm barely below the 90 degrees Celsius mark. You know the point I want to make. As good as the 9900K is, it is pretty damn hard keeping that beast in check temperature wise. But I did hear of reports saying it's depending on the motherboard used, which apparently partially also could lead to slightly different performance numbers. So you definitely have to factor in additional costs for adequate cooling for the 9900K. So long story short, I don't think it's wise to go out and buy a CPU now. You potentially could end up with a better deal if you waited for what AMD launches in the upcoming months. Maybe there's a good choice to be found in the new CPU series by AMD, or we could see price drops on those i9 CPUs, so you could go and get the i9 if that's what you want. Hopefully I didn't confuse you there, at the end of the day both processors offer great performance, no doubt, and I don't think there's a bad choice to be made with either of them. In the end, it's you that has to decide, and my video should only be some sort of of guidance no more. I don't want to tell you which CPU to buy, get the one you think suits you best. And with that said, thanks a lot for watching.